Okay. If everyone is feeling ready, I would like to start with uh, my short presentation. Yes. So welcome to this design thinking workshop, which we titled Think Like a Designer, Five Steps to Solve Any Problem. So today's session will start with a short introduction. Um, and then we're going to dive into an interactive session on Miro for about an hour. And we're going to end with some reflections and closing comments, questions. Um, so yeah, let's get started with the introduction. Um, what is design thinking? So design thinking is a problem solving methodology and it has been sort of invented um, about 20 years ago. A company called IDEO uh, sort of claimed its invention, although it's not like patented, you know, they claim that they sort of are the, the fathers or the mothers of, of design thinking. And it's a process, it's a method to solve problems in a creative way, and it really focuses on that sweet spot between viability, feasibility, and desirability. And it has been deployed in mainly tech and innovation companies to really solve um, and find what their customers really want and iteratively refine their products and services to really address that needs, and even some time to come up with um, needs that their customers didn't even have before. So invent new needs, invent new ones, and address them with new things and new products and new services. And it looks a little bit like this, so it's a very traceable pro process. You can really see where you start and where you end and you can really measure the difference um, the, between the before and after, so to say. Next. So what do I mean with any problem? We're gonna talk a little bit more about this later, but you can ask any question and make it fit in a design thinking sort of process. You can ask questions as vague and as complex such as the one that you see before you right now, uh, addressing cardiovascular disease in the Netherlands and really trying to help people who are struggling with this through a healthy eating. So how can we come up with solutions for them? To how can we define, design the newest feature of this specific software? You know, you, the, 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 the range of kind of questions that you can ask with this method are, are, is really broad. Um, and that's why I, I use the word any. Um, so let's talk about the process. So what you see here is the process um, um, is a typical sort of journey of a design thinking sprint. Uh, this is the one that I run, uh, one, of, one of the sessions that I run in September. And you see what people did uh, on Miro, uh, all the steps. So step one, we call it empathy. So in the empathy phase is where you have this very broad question. And the first thing that you do is that you go straight to the users of your solution, which you don't know yet. So the user or the people who are affected by this problem, the problem owners, and you ask them, uh, what's up? What's going on? Can I learn more about what your live experience is so that I can design something specifically for you? And so you go through this empathic process um, and you map all kind of insights that you generate in that session. And then you move on to the next step, which is called define. In the define, you prioritize because you will probably learn a lot um, in this, uh, in, in step one, of course, and you will have to sort of like figure out what is a priority, and what isn't, and then you will have to narrow it down to a, to a question. So now you are really in a sort of like a problem mindset, and you want to start to switch into a solution mindset. And in the define, you do that. You you really go from like, okay, these are all the problems. This is one problem that we like and we want to work on. How can we turn this problem into 
a question uh, that we can uh, start ideate from. So that we go in step three, which is the ideation. So this question, uh, we call it how may we question. So it's, it's, a, it's a question that starts with how may we, I don't know, in, in this case uh, was how may we help people develop healthy habits so that they don't, um, their, their cardiovascular diseases don't degenerate, for instance. That could be the kind of question, how may we question that you might have to start from in your ideate phase. And here's a very broad sort of a brainstorming session. And then you go through again a, a prioritization through voting. You With your team, you decide, okay, we have all these ideas. Let's go for this one rather than this one. You decide what is a more strategic solution rather than a more uh, tactical solution. You create sort of like a roadmap. And then based on the final solution, say, okay, we really want to develop this one. Then you go into step four, prototype. So you, you start building what we now call an MVP. Uh, at this stage, is not by far yet an MVP. A prototype can be anything, can be a doodle on a, on a piece of paper, can be, a, um, I don't know, a, a mock-up made of paper and plastic. Um, it can be made of Play-Doh. You know, a prototype can be really anything as long as you're able to bring it in front of your user uh, in step five to test it and get their feedback and get their impressions in the least uh, unbiased way as possible. So these are the five sort of like steps of this process. And um, of course you can uh, stretch each phase uh, as much as you want. You can do it in one day and then you will have a design sprint. You can do it in six months and you'll have a design project. You could do it in two years and you will have a full, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a fully fledged service design project for a large corporation. Uh, um, Karen, yeah. Um, can I ask in your screen sharing, your um, image of yourself is in front of step five. <laughs> oh, maybe... step five is, I cannot move my image, but step five is, is test. Okay. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. Step five is test. And it's the last phase. I want to share with you, um, to give you a little bit of a taste of how this looks like in practice, like the, the after movie of, of the session that I just described in the previous slide. So I'll just uh, play this uh, movie for you. did we come together for this Global Goals Jam? As we know, 2020 has been a very uh, intense and rough year and it has brought to our attention big challenges that we're facing globally. Thank you to all the organizations that made this happen. Clap, come on, clap and stop. Yeah, so this was uh, just to give you a little bit of a, a taste of what an application of design thinking could look like. We applied it in the context of this event for one day. Actually, it was uh, two days. Um, because we had a second session the day after, but um, but yeah, so you see it in practice. Five teams working on very different problems related to the sustainable development goals. Yeah, trying to address them in the most creative way and come up with solutions. You saw at certain point like a little um, like a little prototype made of cardboard with a little um, sort of like a, like a windmill structure made of a prototype. And that is good enough for, for that kind of, to assess your assumptions, to, to, to evaluate your assumptions. Um, so next step. Oh, no, I don't want to play this anymore. I want to go to the next slide. We are perfectly, 
Oh, we're perfectly on time for uh, uh, putting this to practice. So I'm gonna share with you the Maro board where we're gonna collaborate and experience on ourselves what a design thinking process looks like. Um, can I share the link with them as well? Okay. Voila. Yes, anyone with the link can edit. So I would like to welcome you all to the Mara board. And now we're gonna pretend like, yeah, I'm gonna close this. We're gonna pretend like we are a design agency, so to say, or, or a team, a business development team. And I will help you facilitate, I will facilitate the session. And I need a volunteer who would like to be a problem owner. All of you have startups ideas and are struggling with, uh, with, with some form of challenge. All of these challenges are suitable for this process. So I'm wondering if there's any of you who would like to, uh, well, oh, I see already a hand up, Sayantan. Yeah, I think challenge for me is how to pre prep for demo day. That's my challenge. Is it workable? Okay, yeah, we, we could do that. Let, let's put that as a as a idea one. Does anybody else have a challenge um, uh, related to their product or business development? They want to volunteer. Otherwise, we go with this. This is also good. I... I maybe have hmm? an idea. Yeah. Um, because our challenge is really that our main product is people physically coming to Spain, which is not possible during COVID. Okay. Okay. Then you have us another project. I'm going to write down a challenge one demo day. Uh, physical presence. Presence during COVID. Anybody else? No. Okay. Then uh, what we do is that we vote. Who wants to go for um, for um, who wants to go for the demo day uh, for the demo day idea of Sayantan? Raise your hand. Who wants to go for Jorin's idea? Oh. I think uh, we have uh, we have a winner with the uh, Jorin's uh, proposal. So how is gonna uh, so how this is gonna work? So I see now there's six people. Online, is everybody able to, uh, was everybody able to connect to Maru? It looks like. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So I'll bring everybody to me. So how this is gonna look like is that uh, you can use posters to take notes and we will basically interview Yorin for the next, uh, for the next uh, 10 minutes about her challenge. We're going to ask her to tell us about what she's experiencing, what she's thinking about, and we are collectively listen to her and write notes for ourselves on this first canvas. Yurin, tell us a little bit. I'm going to start. Tell us a little bit about your challenge. Ooh, this is super cool. Thanks for choosing me. <laughs> um, free advice. <laughs> um, so my challenge is really that um, we want to connect people to nature and to do that in the most uh, profound and effective way, uh, it works best if people are actually in nature, preferably with us, so that the guiding to, uh, that we do is, um, yeah, is actually uh, physically. Um, 
the challenge that we face is the COVID. People cannot come here. Uh, some local people might be able to come, but our network is still very uh, tiny in that uh, respect, in that target group. Um, we have a lot of people in the Netherlands who want to come, but cannot come yet. Um, and there are challenges that we feel a bit of aversity or allergy or um, towards doing a lot of online programming um, because we feel as soon as you start being in front of a screen it's very challenging to actually <laughs> have some kind of nature connection um, yeah so that is a bit what I can tell and also what for us is really important is that we ourselves continue to be connected to nature on a daily basis. And that also is a bit, um, creates a bit of friction with, for example, a lot of people tell me as well, like, oh, you can do so much online on social media. And, but we are already happy if we have like one post every two days because we're just busy around here and we really have to think about it. Like, oh yeah, we have to post something. So we're also not really natural in online social media stuff. Okay. Does anybody have questions for Yurin? What does your uh, physical local network look like, Yurin? And could you explore that further? What have you tried? The It's definitely something we're getting into as well. Next week on Sunday, I will have my first uh, local event together with the yoga teacher who's a friend of mine. So there's a village 10 minutes from us and we have, let's say 20 good connections in the village and good connections meaning people that like us and that like the things we do or that the, thing, the things we want to do. Um, they like our vision. Um, and what we're trying now is for example, to partner up with the yoga teacher, uh, Christina. So I will do an event with her this Sunday. On, she will do a yoga session. I will do a meditation in nature, which is super illegal. <laughs> but we're going to do it anyways. Um, but further than the village, our network is, is really tiny. And now regulations have been... Um, uh, are a bit less strict. So... First, we couldn't move within the municipality. Now we can move within the Comarca, which is kind of like a, like a little province. So that would mean that actually people from Girona, which is quite a big city, um, could come to us. So, <coughs> I don't think, uh, Jorin, people from Girona cannot come to you because that's the province. It's not the Comarca. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I want to ask you, Jorin, um, which, which, um, because you described the problem that you want to connect people with themselves, with nature, and with you. Um, but then, which people, and why? Why, for instance, um, what's the reason that you are aiming at people in the Netherlands to get here? Uh, we're not specifically aiming for people in the Netherlands, but that's where we have our network now. So just because we're starting up, we are starting with the network we already have that is warm. Um, so so, so what's, the, what's the main goal is to connect any interested people with, with your... Any interested person that, uh, that is interested in um, starting to connect with nature and themselves or deepening this connection with nature and themselves. Um, yeah, basically it's that broad. And then we have a preference for like age groups, say 20 to, to 40. But that's, yeah, that's, that's um, like we like a diverse group as well. It uh, brings a lot to the table. So you're are you two to, oh, you're on your oh, table. sorry. Oh. Yeah, I'll just, are you willing to connect with uh, people locally? Uh, uh, just thinking ahead about getting people over to your nature reserve or uh, what was the question are you willing to reach out 
uh, or do you have the capability to reach out and connect more locally within uh, Barcelona or your region? Or? Um, yeah, actually, uh, we would love to do that. Um, mm -hmm. We're just figuring out like what are the best ways. And a lot of people are telling us, yeah, social media, <laughs> which is for us like, oh gosh, yes, how? Um, but what works, like what we're... What we're best at is, is connecting uh, personally. So we do have some contacts that, mm. that, for example, our neighbors have a second house here uh, where we live, but they live in Barcelona and they are super excited about what we do. So if we have something to, to offer to the people of Barcelona, for example, we could ask them um, to help spread it around. There are just not many people like there's the neighbors that I'm talking about and there is maybe one or two other people and, that are connected to Barcelona and could help us in that way, uh, but not so much yet. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yorin, I ha have you tried or considered to reach out to maybe yoga studios who've closed because of maybe government restrictions and you would offer your space to them and they can do the yoga thing? at your farm that's that's actually a quite good idea maybe for in the near future because officially in in aire libre in in the open air it's still not super legal to to gather with a group but that might be the next step probably but i also it's a bit vague because i also heard that yoga studios can open again so it's changing every week. Maybe Gijsbert is better. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to play pedal on uh, Sunday with in the open air. And that's uh, official activity uh, at official pedal club. I, I never played pedal before. Uh, so, uh, but, but it's, uh, so I, I would say nature kind of activities would be okay, but probably not too big of a group. Yeah. Maybe There's limited to six. I think it's limited to six persons. Yeah. And uh, but it, it's also uh, the kind of activity you have. Clearly, I think has a seasonal uh, rhythm. And uh, this month, I would say March is not really the season yet. Rain uh, also one of the challenges in March. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, you could also simply. Uh, this is, I think is what, what is roughly is going to happen for Eastern uh, things will open up a little bit so in people from all around Catalonia will be able to move and and that that opens the, the Barcelona market for you oh, and as yeah. people are not going to come from one day to another uh, and uh, Eastern is only three or four four weeks away uh, that might be something more to focus on and yeah. and use the next this month as uh, I, I know you still have a lot of work to do, just to work on your property uh, building uh, preparations, and and try to get something organized for for Eastern and for I think visits from the Netherlands. It will be uh, uh, earliest to June, something like that. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. So Thank you. Sorry, I would like to uh, move on with the activity. Uh, I am. Uh, I would like to make you all experience the whole uh, the whole five steps. So uh, I think a lot of interesting uh, uh, suggestions are coming up. I just wanted to uh, emphasize that the idea of empathy is to suggest the least amount of solutions and really listen what the current <laughs> issues are and i feel like Sorry, we're all yeah. very much no no it's a good i think it's a natural we're all very helpful and creative people i think we like to to jump straight to solution and i i think it's a great quality uh but really in this case is really about okay let's understand what the constraints are of our problem and what they are experiencing within these constraints um and for instance like for instance um i would say the whole illegal things will be kept out of this brainstorm because of course we, we will not uh, brainstorm on like how to go around the law, right? Or changing the weather, it's something that we cannot brainstorm further. So it's really about understanding what can we achieve within the restraints that, that Jorin is experiencing in her, in her current problem. So 
given that, I would like to go ahead with the define uh, uh, phase. So I would like to um, ask for your patience for a couple of minutes as I organize the notes in clusters and then we'll, um, we will vote uh, for the most relevant problems that we can actually address. Um, okay. So, and help me out if you, if you see strange things that I'm doing. So, uh, so then this is one cluster that I'm thinking about, like all the Corona regulations, we're not going to brainstorm work around them. Um, uh, so, and within the things that we can do about, can do something about, uh, there is a lot actually. So the whole, um, engaging, engaging with nature. Um, digital, digital, remote, digital slash remote, which is another area that we talked about. Maybe there is some potential there, even if there is some friction from, uh, from Jorin in that, in that, in that space. And then I'll just call this other. And then, oh, thank you. I see a guest moving things already for me. Thank you very much. Um, This is also very good networks. Voila. Oh, my cups lock. No. There we go. Personal presence. Yeah. Voila. Look at this. We have some uh, nice uh, little clusters. Kiara, what I don't understand is the clustering things we can do something about. It feels like all the other things apart from what we cannot do something about are yeah, part so, of yeah. So so these about. are this is the macro a macro cluster. Ah, okay. Uh, on top of these three, actually four other okay, so clusters. Yeah. Together, right? Exactly. So oh wait, other just switched. Um, yeah, I just moved it on the side. Uh, but I, what I meant with this, um, it's about networks, actually. I think we can put it like this. There we go. So now we're going to vote. And I will give all of you three votes. Please choose post-its in these three networks. So we'll have clarity on which are our priorities or what we think could be a good problem to tackle within this 45-minute uh, session. And uh, I'll set it up for you. So let I'll give, let's say, I think two minutes is more than enough to read through these few post-its. I'll just do sticky notes. And all the people, including our problem owner, Jorin, feel free to, to, to vote. And then our problem owner will have sort of the last say if we have like a tie or something. There we go.
So what are we voting for exactly? So Which... we're voting for the posters under these uh, clusters. That we're going to work on. Yeah. So which one you think is the most relevant problem that we can tackle now? Everybody's going to vote and then we're going to have... So the most relevant problem, right? Yeah. What you think has the biggest potential or is the most relevant problem that we can address now? Three seconds. Let's see. Processing the results. Okay. So we have um, we have top three. Uh, it's about real connection, connect with the self, with the people, and with nature. Might be able to build local nature and personal presence. Well, then we have actually a lack of clarity on how to connect, and there are facing a physical distance to their customers. Okay, so let me copy them um, into... I think I think the last one and the second one are more or less the same. The same, yeah, that's, that's right, yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Oh. Yeah, so... I be able to build a local network. So as you can see, I'm moving them to our next phase, the ideate phase. And then I'm gonna pick the top the one that have two votes, personal presence, which has to do with this. And lack of clarity on how to connect. I think it's a separate problem so it's about finding solutions to connect in new ways uh remotely i think there we go so now since we have a small group so i thought we would be a bit more uh but uh, since we have a small group i would suggest that we turn only one of these three questions into a how may we, and then we all collectively brainstorm on that one question. So Jorin, what do you think, what attracts you the most? What do you think is most relevant to you among these three sort of like problem areas that we have identified together? Um... I think local network would be the most concrete one, but I think the first one about the real connection, personal presence is a bit more vague and therefore more complicated. So mm -hmm. I think I would rather have some ideas on that. <laughs> okay. And maybe they overlap as well. We'll find out. Okay. What do okay. you say? Is that something nice to work with? I think, um, I think if you're, yes. So... I would like to suggest a how may we question that maybe encompasses a little bit of also the other question. So how may we help you connect with larger 
network in order to convey your message. Let me now. Yeah, I'm thinking also out loud. So it's about connection. So you want to preserve that personal presence feeling, right? So it's, you want to you want to still convey that personal present feeling, even if you're not able to. Do you see that or or do you see something else in this? The very last part I didn't hear. Could you repeat it? So you want to be able to convey the personal presence vibe or feeling that you that is part of your MVP, that is part of your process, right? Uh, even when you're not able to mm -hmm. do it, right? Is that, do you see yeah. in, that's in that way? Yeah. So maybe the question is how, how, may, how may we make people experience that personal presence? Experience. Without physical presence. Yeah, that, that yeah. first the real connection. physical, real connection, yeah. given, the, given the constraints of yeah. the current situation. Uh, can I um, mm -hmm. uh, ask, Jorin, is this is this actually a question you want to be answering since you're building a complete school over there? <laughs> and I can imagine that the second question is more like related to what you're yeah, really- Yeah, I was wondering. Um, yeah, the, like we could also, another option would be, and then the choice I would leave to the participants, I would say, uh, like how might, might, might we be able to build a local network that can actually be present here <laughs> to experience our, our, um, the connection. That sounds, uh, so that and it sounds something that you can actually act upon in the next uh, few weeks before your that's demo true. day. So maybe that's, um, uh, that's a good question for today's session. What do if you see? If everyone agrees, I, uh, I would like that. Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna type the how may we question. How may we What was the suggestion made earlier? Develop? How might we build a local network of people that can actually, that are actually coming physically to our location, to our, I don't know, uh, maybe we can refine it better. But. How can we build a local network that physically experiences the school of nature? Yes, thank you. No, that's good. So, Kiara, is it possible to ask Yurin a question at this point of the ideation phase? Yeah, Where of course. Uh, yeah, Yurin, so uh, when you see a school of nature, so if I'm a guest at your at your residence, so what would that school of nature experience be for me? What would I be left with? Could you put that in maybe a sentence or two? Yeah. Could be various things. So it could be experiencing... Um, farm life. So what would you want me to experience ideally at your school? What would be that type of experience you would like for your guests? Eventually, we would love um, that the most experience are that you, that we provide a program on connecting with nature that you are participating in. And that program connecting with nature includes both uh, or includes practical ways of how to relate to nature. It includes more spiritual ways, like meditations in nature. Um, and um, yeah, how, both these how would that help the practical me? I mean, so in yeah. terms of value proposition, so how would that help me in my life? Me finding new ways to physically connect with nature or spiritually connect with nature? Um. Because if you relate to nature, it always helps you in whatever you need in that moment or in that phase of your life. So if you're looking for clarity on your business or if right. on life, on your life's questions, or if you 
have a need to um, get out of your head, especially the yeah. practical things can help a lot with that as well. Whatever you need, there is something to get from nature. <laughs> okay, final question, I promise, final question. So if, if I were to learn about how to connect with nature, physically and spiritually, so that I can put myself out of a fix, would I necessarily need to be at your students to learn that from you? Sorry, I didn't get the last part. So would I physically be need to be present at your school to maybe learn that? Does that have to be an ethnonomy statement? If In that's my what I want. experience, the, it's most effective when you're physically present. Yes. Mm. All right. Apart from that, it would be kind of a waste if you're building like a whole school and then, you know, give people online solutions, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. for the time being, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I around. mean, not necessarily, actually. I kind of disagree tiny, tiny bit with that because there are a lot of things that just are not possible right now, right? Yeah. So that maybe there are some things that will prime the pump and get people excited already about going there when we can. Absolutely. I think that was kind of Sayantan's uh, point. Yeah, I think you can already, I, um, even before the pandemic, people were sort of, uh, you know, giving people essentially mediated experience, for example, of nature or a type of lifestyle that, you know, you could follow on whatever platforms and Instagram. But I think here you still have the opportunity to say, well, you can experience it in a mediated way for now, mm -hmm. but at the same time, what we're building towards is a physical space that, you know, we would obviously prefer you to be able to experience um, firsthand and you can visit it. And that's our ultimate aim. But I think both things can work in theory in tandem if you wanted them to, I think. Yeah. But let's imagine... I agree uh, with Suzanne. Um, so th like in Kenya, when... You know, the whole lockdown started and international travel was prohibited. Um, so there's a very good conservancy. I think that's where the last white rhino is right now. It's called El Pejeta. They, they were actually giving people safari experience on their social media platforms. So I think mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. And people actually were giving towards like, um, you know, like, towards their kitties or their fundraising or yeah something like this so you can actually do it and still raise money yeah. uh, from the, the online thingy yeah just another yeah. example on that in terms of the physical experience combined uh sorry online experience with a physical experience we did over christmas i think as a surprise i booked for my girlfriend uh basically a, uh, a virtual tour of the pyramids uh, in Egypt because she's <laughs> been many years ago. And basically you're also supporting the local guides and the, the people there that work in the universities that would normally do the tours, but they can't do them now. But, you know, he, they still talk you through what you would essentially see if and when you go or when you went last time and you can sort of relive it. And it was, you know, it was good. It was like a Zoom call like this with people around nice the world. Nice ideas, guys. I think this is where Kiara can uh, guide This us. is really, really great ideas. But let's imagine. So I think I think we're now challenging our clients. So let's say the journey is our client. We're a design agency together. And but she set the, the the objective to really build a local network with the people who are already around her area. So now we're proposing a change of scope. We are proposing a change of 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 assignment for us which uh well some clients may be open to that in the real world but not all of them would <laughs> so i'm sure that jorin uh, jorin will uh, really uh, appreciate these ideas but let's uh, so again we're in this sort of simulation right of how how this works and we have this question so how how may we oh i see uh, eric has uh, uh proposed a new um version of this how how might we build a local network of people that can physically experience the school of nature so this is our brainstorming scope so the scope yep. is people who are in the surroundings of jorin and that can physically already access that and she may have her you know strategic reasons for wanting that rather than going digital may not be like she shared with us that it's more like an itch or something that she doesn't like to do the the, the social media bit the online bit but she may have very valid strategic reasons to just say, no, actually, I really want to have this 
in my closest network. So let's help her brainstorm on that. So how this works is that we I'll set up, um, I'm just keeping track of time, we're a little bit delayed, but uh, I think that's all good. Um, we can uh, have a, let's say, five minutes brainstorm. I'll set up a timer in Miro where we all just dump as many ideas as we can around this question. How may, how may we um, build a local network of people that can physically experience the school of nature? And uh, I'll make the timer start. So let's all just, just dump ideas there. And then again, we're going to How vote. do we do that though, Chiara? Or we just drag the post-it notes again? Uh, yeah, you, you use the post-it notes to, okay. to write on. And if you feel really creative and you want to say draw something, then you can also upload your drawings on Miro if you're able to bring it from your phone to, to your laptop. That's also another option. Uh, or if you want to get share inspiration, you can see on the, on the right side, there is all these icons. There is G of Google. If you click on that, you can also search for images of inspiration to just build a, a bigger narrative around that. Um, there is also this feature here. With the, you can use emojis, you can use all kinds of tools to, to, to help yourself elaborate on your idea. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, let's, uh, I'll set up uh, this five minutes uh, timer and uh, we'll speak in a bit. Somebody eating an apple? <laughs> And feel free to use the whole board. I, I see that we're all kind of like cramping up in the middle, but uh, so we have a clear question and we can use the whole board to, to brainstorm on that.
not so many ideas already. All right, time is up. So there is a lot of ideas in here. Um, and we have about 15 minutes to round off session. We still have prototype and test. So I would like to suggest that I set up already um, um, a voting session. Again, like before, three votes. Uh, let's give it a couple of minutes so that we can all read through the questions, through the solutions that we came up. And then we will prototype together one solution. Mm. Sorry, there's so many nice ideas. <laughs> yeah, I know. So uh, let's include in these ideas. So so all the, so if you're voting for the one outside of the, of the canvas, let's just pick one post, let's say the first. So there is one that starts with a little light bulb. If we want to vote for the whole idea as a, as a, as a block, let's vote for the first post it. And uh, everybody, everything else I think looks quite by itself. So that's fine. Three ideas per, three votes per person. I'm gonna make the, the voting start now. Okay. Sorry, are you also struggling voting? Yes. Yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. I'm gonna, I have to, oops, I'm gonna oh, stop and reset it up. My bad. Um, and voting for all. I think I clicked on only text and I think I have to set up only for post-its. My bad. Uh, Okay, create voting session. Here we go again. Two minutes, three votes, only sticky notes, not text. Okay, start now. There we go. Oh, it should work. For some reason, I still can't vote. Hmm? I don't know why. Is this me? Can everybody else vote? Yeah, I can vote. Ah, no. I see the pluses, but I have one. Yeah, I can't vote either. Yeah. What do you mean? No, I can vote, but oh, 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 shit, shit, shit. I, I can. I can vote. I can. I can vote. Yeah. Kiara, what do we do with the ones who are double? What do you mean? The ones are I double? mean, uh, I think I put a post-it with a drone video and I see another one here somewhere as well. So it's we'll like combine. We'll, we'll combine. No worries. Okay. Somehow I see them.
10 seconds. Oh, yeah, I can hear. There we go. Ah, shit. I voted for the wrong one. I didn't know. <laughs> ah. I could just vote in the last two seconds. <laughs> shit, I voted for the wrong one. <laughs> okay. We have, well, we have an absolute winner, which is this purple-ish one. Create a module, nature walks, convey basic to do's and does, assign teams, um, set logistics, a lot of prep time. Each team embarks on physical exploration and set dates simultaneously. All right. So we have a winner. Do you see the results somewhere? I can see them. You cannot see them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really strange because if you're on Myro, you should be able to see them. Should have come up with see, see the results now. Oh, well, you can see them also on Kiara's shared screen. Right? Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So we have a with four votes, we have an absolute winner for this brainstorm. <laughs> and once again, I think winner is the wrong word. I think there is just an idea that has been liked the most, but I think there is a lot of great material for for Jureen to. So that's the idea also of keeping track of these steps in design thinking, right? So there's a lot that has been generated. For the sake of this session, you move on with one thing that the collective sort of decides. Uh, but, you know, the, the, because you keep track of this, you can always go back to all the other ideas and just test them one by one and see what sticks, right? Um, okay. Yeah, just very yeah. quickly say, really, I'm really uh, <laughs> flipado, they say in Spanish here, uh, blown away by the ideas because there are so many more than I would ever imagine that I wouldn't have come up with myself. Um, so that's super valuable okay. and I love all of them, actually. They're really good ones. Also, like the ladies for coffee, it's Wow, that's actually super powerful here, I think. Yeah. <laughs> many, many. Thanks. Awesome. Well, I'm glad uh, our client is uh, very happy with all the ideas. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> How are we going to prototype this idea? Can I ask uh, the um, uh, whoever put this uh, idea down if they can come forward? Um, I put it down, but actually, now that I think about it, I think it was more prototype than idea. I don't know. Yeah, I think you went in great details. That was, uh, it's really awesome, Sayantan. Yeah, it's really, yeah, I was like, this is beyond, uh, you know, just a, an idea dump, sort of. Um, let's see, but we have, uh, we have uh, sort of uh, saved some time in our process, so we can also do a little uh, prototyping. Um, as well on this. Um, Can I make one suggestion? Yeah. Because I want to suggest making a link with a post-it that I also voted on, which was treasure hunts towards our property. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. is awesome. I think if we could combine it with people yes, moving to our property, so they would actually come here, that would be great. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So I think uh, I think uh, what we can do is that we can uh, prototype a mini. Uh, we can draw a mini treasure hunt uh, here on this uh, prototype board, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna show you how that could look like by using um, uh, the features on on Miro, uh, which I can also which maybe you find interesting. Um, so let's see. Uh, um, so we have uh, our, let's say this is, uh, this is, uh, maybe this is not very accurate, but this is a during, uh, during beautiful space. And we put it here. Maybe it's a little bit too alpine. It's a little bit, probably a bit warmer where you are, but uh, let's say this is a beautiful little hut in nature. This is the village. I'm gonna, I'm uh, improvising, yeah? Huh? 
also a little bit. I have no idea if this looks accurate. Does it look accurate, Jarine? It's a little bit perfect. Uh... <laughs> no, it's perfect. no, it's not accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay then um, I'm gonna actually no let me do a pen drawing and uh, and then together let's decide what are the stops on uh, on this uh, on this uh, sort of like map I'd and like to get a I'd like to get a pirate ship in there yeah, okay. Yes, it's cool. I had a Based upon change. my post. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> do we need to consider... That's how I'd have to group? get over there. That is, because hmm? It's a we, good idea, though. I mean, throughout the entire trail, I think you could put in some bounty, I think. So when teams could reach that, they could maybe, you know, holler at something or maybe just shoot something across whatever media they're connecting on. Uh, the pirate ship kind of... <laughs> Uh, help me think of that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm also thinking at the end, maybe they can find something that's very closely related to nature, something they can dig yeah. up, like it's really buried into the ground. Yeah. And uh, it can be something like, I don't know, something that they can, that's that they want to have, like really want to have. I don't know, something you can valuable take, take in a way. Home even, I think. Like a souvenir, I think. Yeah, but something, not, not something crappy that you put on the table, but something that has to do with nature and is somehow relevant. Like, yeah. I don't know. Treasure. Could you yeah, put I, treasure? I, then we can... Well, I have a better idea. Oh, yeah, we can just put an actual, an actual the, or treasure. What about the ones that arrive get, get some uh, some eggs? Because uh, are, they, are they yeah, chicken yeah, producing? Yeah, 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 then we, let's put some eggs somewhere. Or some obstacle pack. Yeah, or, or little plants yeah, that they can plant yeah. themselves. Or... Ah, yeah. That's also cool. Tricky or a free yoga yeah. session. Plants or an activity or, or eggs. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually. Yeah, or stay in the way. Yeah. So like a path, you know, one path diverging into two or three. One might have yoga, one might have eggs, one might have something else. And whoever takes whichever path they're called to, they get different experience maybe. And they can, they can share it after they reach your school maybe and i think I you need school. you also need someone good with uh, riddles in uh, spanish i guess ah, you yes. want to have uh, you want to have all these little hints yeah. here and there yeah and yeah there could be like um maybe on, on the way there like they get like little photos of different wild plants that they will find on the way and then they have to check make a picture of it's something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and dinner afterwards. Or yeah, if, if you make a if you make a dinner at the end, you will you will make sure that people won't go away, and you have all the yeah, time yeah. to find them over your landscape. Exactly. Super nice. You, you know, guys, I really like this idea because the, um, the when I when I see the village, I see mostly families with kids that are completely into pirates. Actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is there really we, cool. There we go. And awesome. I think it also follows all the regulations as well, all the COVID regulations as well, I think. People aren't gathering in groups, they are just going for walk across the countryside, nothing illegal, right? I don't, know, I don't know if it's a British thing, but they do it here a lot, is where um, they hide things for kids to find around. Like, uh, one popular thing is fairy doors, so they'll mm. paint little things on trees, and it's like a fairy door, and then the kids can find like 29 of them or something along the way. And it's a little problem. I like it. Yeah. Great. Maybe also yeah. spice also it up here we have yeah. what? No, I, I wanted to say maybe for the for the little bit older kids, you can even hide stuff like from World War Two, something like very exciting to find, right? Like something that's sort of like you know, triggering a young boys' imagination. Um, World War II is a, is, a, is a touchy subject here uh, as they didn't really participate and then uh, okay. they had this internal, let's say, uh, war with, between the, revol well, the, the Republicans yes. and the, the, uh, the Franco. Uh, so I, I wouldn't go that way. 
Okay, but maybe something. Some good history books all over I, the place. Yeah, I, I, I put it. Maybe it's about referencing the place history. Maybe not per se World War Two, mm. but whatever it is, the cultural heritage of the area. Maybe. Yeah, but not that, like yeah. that. It's also excited for like kids, you know, like yeah. that. It's not like boring grown-up shit, but like. For sure. Really exciting. Yeah. For yeah. I think while while the signups are being floated wherever they are floated, I think Yorin, you can ask each person who's who's participating what would a treasure be like for them, and you could collect mm. all the responses and then you could hide them in places. And if somebody finds mm. something which is not their treasure, they can maybe when everyone's together they can just post it. You know, I got this, and somebody says, "Oh, I wanted that," and then maybe they can dialogue over. It. I don't know. Mm. Um, and I have another okay. idea. What about what about euros in all nationalities? So you can collect the euros in every nationality. Maybe that doesn't thing. Like it's really money. <laughs> all right. Ah, like like as a treasure, you mean? Yeah, as a treasure. Yeah. There we go. I, 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 I you put the ideas on post-its because then I yeah. get them all together. Yeah, let's, okay, let's, let's do that. Cool. I think uh, now you're experiencing a little bit what it feels like to build a prototype, right? So we're again going broader. We narrowed and then we're going broader again. Um, I would like, we don't really have time to test, but uh, this session had our client involved throughout. So testing uh, looks a little bit different for us. This is more of a co-creation because, uh, yeah, we can hear from uh, from her directly what... Uh, what her comments are about the idea and uh, she's been positive throughout but uh in a sort of like a real life scenario we would actually go to the villagers um experiencing this sort mm -hmm. of uh, uh treasure hunt and hear from them their feedback how, how do they find it do they want it more tailored to their kids needs or do they like it more tailored to uh the adults needs um so that uh, our client can refine their MVP <laughs> further and further. Mm -hmm. So uh, this brings me to the end of uh, this mini workshop. Um, I see people are still putting, uh, uh, putting some slides. I, I wanted to share one last uh, slide uh, of my own. Uh, Dick, yeah. can, you, can, I, can you please help me? We have this... Uh, space spaceship like station here with all kinds of buttons and i don't know how to <laughs> navigate myself so i want to share my screen again if you're it's possible st you're still sharing your screen. Oh, okay but uh, my google slide yeah yeah so you're all in maro so you can keep continuing i i wanted to end today's session to talk about why i call it i put quote marks around the word any uh, to kind of like connect back to the design thinking methodology as uh, as, it, as it is currently used in the industry. So traditionally, as I said also earlier, design thinking focuses on viability, desirability, and feasibility. And the question about sustainability has been neglected throughout. So uh, now we have really powerful inventions, uh, products, services that address needs address needs so well that they make people addicted to them and they have all been developed using design thinking. Um, and so um, I think uh, it's a little bit, um, the method is excellent, but oh, as a turn, it, if the purpose is not right, it can lead to um, maybe uh, risky outcomes. Empathy. Um, now there is a whole debate in the sort of design community uh, around the word empathy. So empathy can be very misleading because, you know, if you're tackling very serious problems, let's say you're developing some medical devices to address, uh, let's say, very serious um, issues related to health and well-being, how can you possibly be empathic, right? So it's a very, it's a very, um, how can you possibly really experience something so perhaps traumatizing or difficult and really turn into a product so um, now we call this phase i prefer to call this phase um, uh, problem scoping or discovery uh, because it gives a little bit of leeway and, and it's and it's uh, also safer to to make assumptions you're really striving for empathy but it's a bit it's, for me it feels like a big claim to say we're fully empathetic with somebody else's experience it's a little bit of a yeah 
It's just to, for me to, 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 to acknowledge the limitation of the process, so to say. Uh, the third point is that design thinking is not enough. So now design thinking is taught in, for instance, in, uh, in, uh, in business schools because it's a very helpful business tool. Uh, but at some point you need also design doing. So you need to turn the ideas into, into, into things, into, into services. And so then the thinking ends at some point. And so what do you do about it? And last, uh, the, the method as it is originally created, so with these five steps, doesn't at all discuss implementation. So it doesn't go into sort of like, how do you manage then this idea? How do you bring it to reality, really? Uh, even if you have this prototype, that can be this doodle that we made on Miro, that can be a, a little, you know, Play-Doh model of whatever it is they are creating. Um, it doesn't say anything about how you're going to actually make it happen. So now uh, people in the in, in, in my industry add a couple more steps to the design thinking model because you actually want to guide your client to actually make things real. And uh, so that's why... I put quote marks on any because, uh, yeah, it's really, really broad, but it has also its limitation. It's very powerful, but uh, we need to acknowledge uh, where it doesn't work. And this, um, with this, I uh, would like to end.